I am 33 weeks pregnant today and I had a doctor's appointment this morning. They did an ultrasound because they thought that maybe she was on the big side and they were worried about her being too big, but she's not. She's five pounds, she's right on track. So we have about six weeks until we're gonna have a baby, new baby in the house. Uh, in the meantime, we wanted to do a review on our Cowtown sleeper before she gets here. And so I'm gonna show you what it's all about. Before we get into our review, you need to know a little bit of history about Cowtown sleepers. So Cowtown sleepers, the original Cowtown sleepers, actually burnt down. They had a fire and it burnt down. They were in Fort Worth, Texas. They burnt down and a new company came along and bought the moles and the intellectual property. So when you hear people give reviews of Cowtown sleepers, keep in mind there are the older Cowtown sleepers, which was made by the original company, and now they're made by a new company and they're doing business as Cowtown Sleepers, but they are not the original company. You might ask why we actually chose to get a Cowtown Sleeper cab versus just some of the other options that are out there for larger families. And our reasoning is that uh, we actually did a whole video. We'll link it up above if you uh, wanna check that out. But to sum it up, we decided against a second vehicle. We didn't want to chase our car. We didn't want the expense of a second vehicle. We didn't want to have all the extra gas and everything when we're both traveling, um, pulling the rig. And we really like to travel together. That's a huge part of our travel day when we're pulling the rig. We really like to be together in the truck. I'll navigate, Derek drives or vice versa. And the kids are asking questions and we play games and stuff like that. So we really wanted to stay together in one vehicle. So that's our biggest reason for choosing the Cowtown Sleeper over some of the other options out there or revamping our whole rig and getting a whole new setup. Hopefully that explains why we went this way versus another way um, and why a lot of families, larger families, choose a Cowtown Sleeper. Give me a kiss. Oh. <laughs> We were first intrigued by the idea of a Cowtown sleeper because we ran into some full-time family friends. They have five kids and they had one vehicle. I'm gonna link their business down below so you can check it out if you want. But we saw their Cowtown cab. It wasn't painted, but um, the idea of it, the guy, our friend was saying, hey, it's, it's a great option for us. We, we travel together, we like to travel together. And that really, that sounded like us. So we're like, you know, if we have, ever have another kid we'll probably get one of these Cowtown sleepers. So obviously we're getting ready to have another kid. So we started looking more in depth for these Cowtown sleepers, looking into it and decided that it really was an option for us. Here's what I'd like to say about it. I don't want you to wait to the end of this video. We are not completely happy with this cab. There, I said it. We aren't 100% satisfied. The whole ordering process, the customer service, quality of the cab, we were disappointed with all three of those aspects. And let's get into it and we'll go a little bit more depth, in depth about it so you'll know what to expect if you are thinking about getting one of these Cowtown sleepers. So Cowtown sleepers, uh, as a company, as a whole, at least my understanding of their specialty is that they really specialize in sleeper cabs for hotshot drivers. So what's guys, a hotshot driver? You gotta tell them. <laughs> just in say, case someone doesn't I was know. Say. So hotshot drivers are people that haul freight, um, haul cargo, whatever, with their pickup. So they're not in a big truck. They're using their pickup, and they still have the same requirements as, say, a big truck driver. They have so many hours that they're allowed to drive, and they have to sleep, or they have to rest. So they have to have a DOT, or Department of Transportation approved, sleeper cab on their truck. And if they have that, then they save themselves from having to sleep at hotels and stuff. So Cowtown Sleepers started, or at least I believe that's their specialty. That's what they do. That's why they're called Cowtown Sleepers. And so the unit that we have, and that other families that are just trying to add seating in their truck. It's not the exact same unit. It's not made the same. It's a different setup. And so I just wanted to throw that out there that it's not their specialty, that their specialty is sleeper cabs and that's what they're normally doing. So before we started this, you heard me say that Cowtown sleepers 
was actually owned or an original company that actually burned down in Fort Worth, Texas. All the reviews that we can find from the original owners are great reviews. Like they put together some great sleepers and the owners of that company took real care in providing great customer service to their clients. They were actually a fiberglass shop, so they had all the molds, they did all the installation themselves, but now the person who actually purchased all the intellectual property from Cowtown is able to use the name, able to use the molds. Speaking of, I wish I would have known this before we actually ordered. I had to find this out all the hard way. One of the reasons why we wanted to do this video is because it's very difficult to find reviews on the newer company. The new Cowtown Sleeper is a lot more different than the old Cowtown Sleeper. So the next thing we wanted to talk about really quick is the ordering process with Cowtown. It's not what we expected from a company who does like a lot of volume. You go to their website, you kind of look at several options. It's not 100% clear what all the options are, what they cost. You kind of pay a base price and then you add on from there. Anyway, it's, it's like fill out a form, send it in, and then they'll send you a quote. And so we did that, that's how we started. And then we talked to the lady that owns the company in person after that and kind of dug a little deeper and found out what the different options were, what's this cost, what's this mean, you know different things like that because there's not a lot of information on their website as far as how big the windows are and do they open and does it automatically come with a door do you have to add that certain things like that so we had to talk with her and we went back and forth several times on different options and by the time we got our final invoice for what all it was gonna cost it was way more than we originally expected but um, just the process of all of the going back and forth through email it was it was a little more difficult than I would have liked it would have been great if it was just here's the price here's the options this is what it comes with and be done with it but it was a little more complicated than that I'm not gonna lie this cab going down the road actually looks really good from a distance it's sexy it gets a lot of looks and we get a lot of people when we go down the road and we're when we're in town a lot of stairs because of the door in the back it looks really nice however when you get a little closer it's just not what you would expect for paying so much for a unit so let's check out i'll show you the little details i'm talking about that we weren't happy with all right let's try not to pay too much attention to the dirt on our truck right now it's pretty dirty right but I want you to take a look at the windows. The windows on the side here were probably the biggest disappointment for me. And there's a story behind these. From day one, when we actually submitted the form for this cab, and when we talked to the owner of Cowtown, we let them know that our kids were gonna be back here and we needed windows that were able to vent because we weren't gonna buy an AC or a heater to put back here. However, we did want our kids to have ventilation when they were riding back here. So I told her I wanted windows that would either open uh, up and down, side to side, or that would pop out to give my kids ventilation. And she assured me that we'd be able to have ventilated windows on here. Two days before we pick up our vehicle, our truck, we get a text message that says, hey, we weren't sure where you wanted the windows on the back, so I called the shop and told them just to put them on the back, like back here meaning we wouldn't have windows on the side. So from day one, we had three conversations about how I needed these windows to vent, and two days before I go pick it up, we had left from Texas, San Antonio, to North Carolina to get this thing installed, and as we're going through the Smoky Mountains, we get a text message from the owner saying, hey, I can't remember where you wanted the windows, so I just told him to put them on the back. I told Stephanie immediately I wasn't happy, and I said, I guarantee that the shop already put the windows on the back and this is her way of trying to convince us that the windows would be better on the back because in the message it said hey the windows will be better on the back anyway it'll give you more visibility but after all those conversations i had with the owner of the company about how i needed these windows to vent and after knowing that i needed windows on the side two days before we pick it up she says hey we already put the windows on the back so Stephanie and I didn't like that. And not only did we not like it, we told her that we needed the windows on the side. So we call her and she says, she eventually says after a bunch of back and forth, I don't wanna get into that right now. She says, well, we're gonna put windows on the side to make you happy. However, when I said, hey, I need ventilating windows on the side. I've told you that from day one. We need windows that vent on the side. We need windows on the side. So I'm thinking that now that she calls us and says, okay, we're gonna put the windows on the side, that we're all good. Well, 
I go to the shop to pick this cab up and notice that these windows do not vent and I was not happy. After all that, I wasn't happy. You know, you think you drive all the way, halfway across the country to pick up this cab that you paid a lot of money for, which we're gonna talk about here in a second, exactly what this costs. Uh, and from day one, I've asked for venting windows on the side and I pick it up and there's no venting windows. But I've already driven, so what do we do? And also, let's look at some of the craftsmanship um, that went into these windows. Now, I can't blame the shop that put these in because the shop that installed this cab actually gets great reviews. And I met the owner of the shop and he's a great guy. I think the reason why the craftsmanship on these cabs has gone downhill since the original owner is because the lack of customer service and the lack of, of real knowledge of full-time families. And also the craftsmanship when they put this thing together was just not good. And I think it's because they were rushed trying to get us out of the door. Come here, I'll show you a little bit closer. So these are the window frames. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I wanna show you this if I can. You see this? The glue, like, it looks like they just ran it across with their finger. Like, it's hard to see from a distance, but when you get close, like there's glue everywhere. Now, I don't wanna blame the company that actually installed this, the fiberglass shop, because they told me that the owner actually orders all the parts, all the windows, and they only do what they're told by the owner. Because let's face it, the owner of Cowtown is actually who is paying them. Kinda, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. All right, the lighting in my truck is not great, but hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm talking about when, I'm, when I mention the craftsmanship. Look, and I want a caveat, Stephanie and I are not divas, all right? We weren't expecting the world when we got a custom cab, but for as much as we paid for this thing, we were expecting a lot more. First things first, when you look in it, it's just straight painted fiberglass. There's nothing special on the inside, just fiberglass. So this right here, you, it's hard to see, but it's just fiberglass painted black. And like I mentioned with the door earlier, this door is an RV door with an RV frame. And it's actually framed right in the fiberglass. So it's not supported. It's, it's actually really flimsy. Here's one thing I wanted to point out too. These screws are just left in the open. You know, we have kids that ride back here and all these screws are just open. Not only that, but you can see one right here. I actually broke that screw off. It was sticking out about a half an inch right where my son is riding, right in his side. Like right where his elbow and his pelvis would be right here. And I broke that off. There was actually, there's actually another one right here that I wasn't able to break off all the way. So screws sticking out in the open. Another thing, all these are, are pads. Like, there, it's not even a seat. It, all it is is like a pad that you had put on something like now we'll say that the seats do fold but they are boat seats deck made seats made for boats and i wish we would have been told that they were going to be just boat uh deck mate seats that's all they are deck mate seats with some vinyl pads on them and also every time it rains this door leaks so we have heard with the new cowtown that the boot that goes in between your cab, or I'm sorry, the truck cab, the actual truck cab, and the manufactured cab, there's a little sleeve. I'll show you that. The sleeve. We have been told that this is also known for leaking. We haven't seen this leak yet, but every time that it rains, our door has leaked, and it causes a puddle in the floor right here. I want to show you this too. So I am going to go close this. You think it's closed, but it's not latched. Still not closed. Still not closed. Still not closed. It should shut, latch, and then you have to pull this to actually open it. But there we go. Now we're closed. I'm gonna open this for my kids, so just a little ventilation back here. Now this window does uh, slide and open. These are the two windows they cut, um, basically without asking us where we wanted the windows, and these are the windows that we insisted they install, but we were told that they would be ventilated, and as you can see, they do not open. That's hot. 
Oh. All in all, are we happy with our cab? No. no we're not happy. It, it will do. Like, it serves yeah. a purpose for right now. Our kids are riding back there. I wouldn't say they're 100% comfortable, but they're riding back there. They're doing well. They rode all the way from North Carolina to Texas, and uh, they like riding back there because it's new to them now. However, for what we paid for it, um, no, we're not happy. So what did we pay for? This is two stories in one, because the whole time that we're talking about getting this cab, we were under the impression that we pay one person, one price, and we get the cab. One company. One company. One company. That's what you would think, doing business with Cowtown. However, on the day that I went to pick it up, Stephanie stayed with the kids at the campground. I went to pick it up, and I said, hey, I need a check, because I'm gonna need to write her a check. Uh, the lady who owns Cowtown. Stephanie, instead of giving me one check, she said, here, just take the whole book. And I, I said, almost just gave you one. Yeah, I said, all right, I don't know why I'm gonna need uh, this whole book, but it's a good thing that I took that whole book because when I arrived, there's a whole nother story about this, but when I arrived to uh, get the cab installed, the owner of Cowtown wasn't there, but the fiberglass shop owner was there. And he told me, he said, hey, she is on her way. Didn't even call her by her name. Well, when the owner of Cowtown arrived, the very first thing she said was, I believe it was like, how are you really quickly? But then the second thing out of her mouth was how do you want to pay the balance? There was no, hey, let's walk around the cab. Let's make sure it's built to your liking. Let's show you the cab a little bit or anything like that. She walked right by the cab, walked right to me, said, hey, how would you like to pay the balance with check or car? And I didn't like that, especially after I saw, I had just seen that the windows did not vent. And I said, hey, these windows don't vent. And she was like, yeah, those vent windows don't vent. There's no way to vent the windows um, with th those size windows. And I said, well, you didn't, you didn't tell us that. And there was nothing else said about it. At this point, I'm ready to get back to San Antonio and I know that I can get other windows to put in and, and um, place them in myself. So I didn't fight her on it. However, what she told me was she gave me a price and then she said, oh, you're gonna have to pay the owner of the shop the remaining balance. And I said, no one ever told me that. Like, why am I paying two people to do this? She said, well, you have to pay him for the install charge and the paint. And I, no one had ever told us that there was two separate charges, you know, or like I'd have to pay two different people. So anyhow, I wanted to tell you that story. All in all, it wasn't a very good experience and I'm not happy with what we paid for it. Although it looks good going down the road and we get a lot of looks, when you get a little closer, the craftsmanship, oh yeah, we didn't say what we paid for it. So um, in total, all out, so painted, installed, Cowtown Sleeper cost us- A little over $6,500. $6,500 for this. And it, was, it was, and it was very confusing. You had to pay, the price of the cab itself was like $52.50, and you had to pay half of that up front which we paid by credit card, and then she tacked on a fee for using a credit card. And then that's what Derek was talking about, is he had to pay the remaining balance of that, plus a separate check for 1300 for paint and install. So all in all, it cost us a little over 6,500. So still, $6,500, after doing the math on another car, it will save us money in the long run, but for $6,500, the craftsmanship is nowhere where it needs to be. So if you or anyone that you know is actually looking into a Cowtown sleeper. If anybody you know or you have a Cowtown sleeper already, please let us know your experience. Put yes. whether it was good or bad, we wanna know. So yeah. comment below and let us know what you think That's of right. yours. Thanks a lot. That is our honest review of our Cowtown sleeper. And you know, it took us a long time to we sat down and talked about it. We didn't want to do a review because we knew it'd be negative. And then we thought, you know, we have an audience that has written on us, uh, that has written to us, that has supported us from day one. We've gotten comments on how authentic we are, and I really appreciate that. And I don't think we'd be doing our brand a service or the full-time RV community if we did not give an honest review on our experience. It's not all, uh unicorns and rainbows all the time and this unfortunately this experience uh should have been unicorn and rainbows and it wasn't so it's going to serve its purpose for a while but we will be changing it out as soon as we can get it made
that's it guys thank you for watching if you haven't subscribed uh, to our channel we would love to have you subscribe please and do hit that. that notification bell so you can the bell. get all the new videos every time we release them thanks a lot we'll see you next time see on ya. freedom calling RV <laughs> that is what it's called yeah.